Hello, peeps! Today I'll be doing a brief book review summary on the book called The Great Fire by Jim Murphy. So by the title of this book, you can probably already know what it's about. It's about a fire. But which fire? The Great Chicago Fire. I'm pretty sure most of you have read about the Great Chicago Fire. But in case you haven't read about it, which I doubt you haven't. But if case you have not read about the Great Chicago Fire because you live in some foreign state or country or whatever... I'm going to tell you all about it and what this book is all about. It all started in Chicago, Illinois in the year 1871 on 137 DeCoven Street. DeCoven Street, what the schmer? That is the address, my friend of Mrs. O'Leary's cottage or hut. She also had a barn. Now it isn't really scientifically proven, but I'd say that most people would think that the fire started because Mrs. O'Leary was peacefully milking her cow in her barn and then the cow knocked over a lantern and then it caught fire. You probably already know what the O'Leary's reaction was. It was that they were running around screaming fire, fire, fire. And I'm pretty sure most of you think that if the O'Leary's own a barn, then there isn't just that one cow that Mrs. O'Leary's milking. There's also five other cows and a horse and a calf. Now a guy named Sullivan untied the ropes of two cows and then the frightened animals did not budge. Sullivan is in extreme danger. He's being dauntless because his leg is just a luckery. Then the shed next to it, which contained all the coal and fuel and preciousness, was engulfed and consumed by the swallowing fire. You probably know what the next reaction is. Neighbors already saw the fire. They carried pots of water and then they threw it on the fire, but Idda, idda. The fire was still strong, and unfortunately, water didn't work. I moved a chair. Sure enough, sometime after, the fire spread, and neighboring buildings caught fire. Hmm. <laughs> and I know what some of you are thinking. I know what some of you are thinking. Samia, buildings are made out of stone and cement, and that is not flammable. You are right. You are right, my friend. Stone and bricks are actually not flammable. Back in those days, most buildings were made out of wood. Then the wood would be painted in order to look like stone or marble. I'm in my room. Think about it. Everyone, I'm talking Everyone in Chicago is at a huge disadvantage. Because, shh, shh, let me tell you that even the wealthiest people, yes, their houses had a stone cement exterior, but a wooden interior, and it was, and it neighbored smaller wooden framed houses. So even the thing is that... Like a long, long, long time ago when Chicago was getting built, it was built on soggy marshlands that flooded every time it rained. Okay? And so then people couldn't get across. The only solution that people thought it would be was to make wooden sidewalks that were elevated above the ground so that people could walk across. But that only made the situation worse. Because let me tell you, okay, because wood, like I said, was highly combustible. And so that caught on fire as well. Back to the O'Leary's. So at the O'Leary's business, they also had a cottage, like I said at the beginning of the video. Or maybe not. Children were in bed. And also Mrs. O'Leary's first thing 
was to try to get her kids safely out of the cottage and out of the fire. And then a guy named William Lee, who I think it is, um, he, uh, his 7 uh, or 17 month old son, maybe, his 17 month old son, um, he was crying, so he went to comfort him, and then he went to see why was he crying? Why was he crying? It is pretty obvious. Because of the Great Chicago Fire, right outside his house. And you know, have you ever seen a campfire and you've seen like um, little embers of kindling and burnt kindling and like sparks and all that thing? Yes, those tanks, those stupid tanks came flying into his lawn and igniting his fence and his grass. He then rushed to a drugstore. Like, really, what are you going to do at a drugstore? He wanted to set up a fire alarm, but then this guy named Doll refused. And then more, more, more panic, wanic, shanic. People started committing suicide. Just like I'd do if I was a slave in Africa. Coming to America. I wanna sleep. People running around in this fire. As you know, people began losing their things due to the intense heat and so many flames. And unfortunately for a lot of people, this was probably the case. What do I do? What do I do? There's fires all around me. There is fires all around me. I have nothing to do. Okay, maybe right there. Like heck no, it was so hot. Uh, I say calor. Uh. Bridges, like mostly sh of Chicago was burned down by now. Little girl Claire trapped in engulfing flames. <laughs>